All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our roundtable discussion with KPMG, Johnson & Johnson, AbV, Allergan, and, Al and Altrix today. Uh, we're going to talk about how folks are creating automation efficiencies and remote working environments using OneSource, uh, but we're also going to be talking about some additional technologies uh, such as Altrix and how these solutions are really helping uh, you all if, in a whole new era of COVID. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Kelly Lear. I'm a director on the Partnerships and Alliances team and brought the partnership uh, together last year between uh, Thomson Reuters and Altrix. Um, and I work closely with the KPMG team here on the panel uh, as well. I have over 20 years tax technology and tax transformation uh, experience uh, with corporations like yourself. So I'm happy to talk about these topics with you all today. So let's hand it over to Greg. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Greg Sweeney. I'm the Altrix Partner Manager for the Thomson Reuters Partnership. I lead the strategy, the go-to-market, and the operations uh, of the partnership, Altrix Partnership with Thomson Reuters. Uh, Altrix has created a, a new software category called APA, Analytic Process Automation, and we're thrilled that uh, so many OneSource customers are able to take advantage of the new platform. Hi, uh, this is Sandy Fisher. Very happy to be here and to uh, participate in this panel today. Uh, I am a principal and one of the leaders of our national ignition and tax transformation and technology practice, uh, which falls under our umbrella of tax reimagined. Uh, our practice looks to help our clients with um, assessing and providing efficiency and effectiveness to people, process, technology, data, and their controls. Uh, today, I'm very happy to talk about uh, how Thomson Reuters one source tools and Alteryx. We're using those to help our clients uh, draw efficiencies and uh, streamlining their processes. Thanks, Sandy. Uh, my name is Joe Habak. I am a managing director in our national tax ignition group. My core focus is to work with tax departments to um, improve their tax process and data management uh, using technology solutions. Been doing that for several years now. Uh, I am also KPMG's leader for uh, OneSource Workflow Manager and Dataflow. Uh, very happy to be here today. Thank you. Hi, I'm Andy Marriott. I'm a director in the New York based tax technology group out of KPMG. Um, I have over 20 years' experience split both between public accounting and large multinational corporation in house accounting. I am a subject matter expert in tax, ASC 740, and all the one source prod products. Um, I'm happy to be here with you and kind of go through our one source solutions. And, and I do want to add that both Joe and Andy uh, are re the most recent and two years ago winner of the Taxologist Certified Implementer of the Year Award. So Andy is the, <laughs> Andy is the leaning, the, the, re the reigning. Um, Winner champion. of that, and Joe won <laughs> champion, and Joe won two years ago. And we are just so happy to have our esteemed clients here. We're going to introduce themselves right now as well. Thanks, Sandy. Hi, everyone. My name is Donna Oaks. I'm the Senior Tax Technology Manager at Johnson & Johnson. Right now, my current role is responsible for everything OneSource related, uh, so looking at process efficiencies using the OneSource tools. And then also recently uh, started coming into the compliance team for process efficiencies using Corp Tax. Thank you, Donna. Mark? Hi, I'm uh, Mike Rocha. I'm an international tax director at, uh, it says they're AbV slash Allergan. So um, prior to um, the combination of the two companies, I was leading the international reporting and compliance function for Allergan PLC. Uh, in May of this year, we were acquired by AbV Inc. Um, so now I am uh, working in that role for the new combined company. Um, and that, of course, is me pre-COVID when I was grooming regularly, but now I <laughs> don't so much anymore. Your hair has grown so long, Mike, there. Since I'm keeping up here clean, but not doing so well down here. I get, I get lazy when I get past my nose. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, logistics and CPE information. Uh, this session has been pre-recorded. However, a subject matter expert is participating in this session live uh, to answer your questions using the Q&A panel. 
To verify your attendance and qualify you for CPE credit, uh, please ensure you acknowledge all attendance pop-up alerts. Be sure to complete the session survey to provide us with valuable feedback. Uh, CPE credits for attending this session live will be added to your Synergy CPE certificate that will be emailed to you following the conference. And the recording of this session will be available post Synergy, uh, but will not qualify for CPE credit. Objectives of uh, today's session. Upon successful completion, you'll be able to identify the tax technologies used to enhance automation, create efficiencies, and improve end-to-end -end provision, compliance, and tax process data management in remote working environments. All right, so we've got five questions uh, for today's session. We're going to start with question number one. Uh, how do OneSource and Altrix fit within your tax technology transformation strategy? And Donna from J&J, you're up first. Sure. So at Johnson & Johnson in the past two years, I'd say, we've really started becoming heavy users of Altrix. Um, we've had a lot of support from the top, I'd say, from our uh, VP of tax where after hearing about how great Altrix is and that it's really a more user-friendly tool, she's really gone forward with encouraging all of the local users to use Altrix. So within our tax technology team, we actually have um, a tax technology manager responsible for rolling out the whole Altrix strategy within the tax department. We've had multiple training sessions where we're trying to get um, in-house, in-team expertise. Also have had many sessions where we've had a lot of brainstorming going along to see where there's a lot of processes that we can start to fully you know, automate using Alteryx. One of the processes that um, we have been able to automate uh, starting first on the in-house side was um, within the tax technology team. We had a member of our team look at um, how we're tying out one source to our consolidations tool. And in the past, it was a very long, painstaking activity because we have about we have over 300 management reporting companies that we're trying to uh, now tie one source to our consolidations tools. So what she did was she put together a pretty cool Altrix workflow where it pulled in all the data from OT pay, pulls in our consolidations data, and it compares the two and also provides um, some metrics back to our leadership to see where we're having any disconnects between our consolidations tool and OneSource because the goal of using OneSource is really to heighten our analytics related to our effective tax rate and gain visibility to that, but then also having assurances that the data that we're analyzing is also the same data that's getting reported out in to the streets. Um, so that that also, if we weren't using that, would have taken us a couple of days to pull together that analytics, and now it's a matter of an, an hour really to pull it together. So that's been one huge efficiency that we've seen. Um, within our department. We've also actually used Altrix to um, pull together our C by C reporting and do a lot of the analytics needed for that, which is also a rather large project. Um, and then probably the, the last project that I wanted to touch on was really, um, this one was a bit larger. We did need a little more help, so it wasn't an in-house effort. We also used KPMG to help us automate all of our uh, consolidations that we have in OT pay. In J&J, &J, we have many management reporting companies, and then we also want to look at those uh, management reporting companies, our legal entities. So we probably have upwards of 3,000 plus consolidations running through OT pay. And every time we gain a new entity or a new management reporting company, we have to kind of reshuffle all the data. Every time we have new users also, we need to make sure that it, all of the users are getting the right access. So we, we actually work with KPMG to put together an Alteryx workflow that compares all of our um, 
uh, our CSC, sorry, our subconsolidations that's in OTPay pulls together all the new units that have to get added to current subconsolidations. Um, so it's really, it basically took uh, a human four hours per new unit um, that got put into one source to then add it to all the various sub consolidations. Looking at this eye chart, they're now doing it in a matter of minutes now and, and having a lot better assurances around what's going into OTP for all these sub consolidations. So we really have been able to gain a lot of efficiencies because I think without this tool, we wouldn't have been able to properly, you know, administer OT pay to be perfectly honest. Yeah, and, and Donna, to, to your point on that, the amount of time savings using Alteryx when configured correctly um, can be can be astronomical at times. Um, I know another project uh, that we've been working with is bifurcating out the intercompany um, transactions and intercompany payments specifically to determine beatable payments at some point in time in the future. And all of that transactional level data, doing it the old way um, in Excel, pivot tables or Power Excel wouldn't really be able to handle it the way that Alteryx does. And a very successful outcome, and then that data can then be pushed to a um, dashboarding or analytics platform to visualize that data. And it takes mere minutes or seconds compared to the old processes that would have taken uh, hours or days. All right, well, well thanks, Donna. So we're going to turn to uh, Mike from uh, AbbVie Allergan with the same question. Mike, how do one source and Alteryx fit within your tax technology transformation strategy? So I have to say we're not, at Allergan, we're not as far down the road with um, Alteryx as Donna is a J&J. &J. It was great hearing about that stuff. So now, Sandy, I want Alteryx. Uh, make it happen. <laughs> Um, but, uh, so let's talk know, after the session. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so, you know, really with one source though, I, I think the interesting thing about Allergan is we're, you know, we were a company that was kind of born through acquisition. It wasn't like a company that kind of grew organically. It was a company that was born by the combination of many companies. And for anyone who's been through that, um, you could, you can understand that, you know, bringing very different pieces together means that you bring very inconsistent data together and, you know, very inconsistent work papers. So when I walked into this company, you know, it was three or three and a half years ago or so, um, there really, outside of one source tax provision, there really wasn't much um, process, really wasn't much automation technology going on. And over the past few years, we've worked a lot with Sandy and Joe and the team, and we've really kind of built up our process. We've organized our data, we've consolidated our data, we've consolidated our process. We use things like data flow and, you know, work papers, um, you know, to really, make things consistent and really make things hum along very easily and efficiently for us. And I'm, I'm sure Sandy's going to remind me about one of my favorite um, things we did with these guys was, um, you know, in response to tax reform um, and, and the guilty calculations, um, you know, uh, you know, for, I'm sure everyone's aware, but, you know, when you look at your CFCs underneath the U.S., you've got, you know, now you've got three different calculations you have to do. You have to do, you know, tax provisioning or tax calculations under local tax law in those countries. You have to do CFC E&P calculations uh, for your 5471s, but now you also have to do guilty computations, which are basically taking these entities and putting them on the U.S. tax system. Um, so, you know, what we worked on with Sandy and Joe was building out a data flow that would kind of connect all our different data flows together. We had the U.S. tax structure, which, you know, had our various flux accounts for vacation accruals and our various perm accounts for M&E and penalties and the branded pharma fee. And then we had in our non-U.S. data flow or non-U.S. trial balances, you know, split by, you know, split periodically to help us with split periods. So we built a third data flow that kind of connected those two together and, and helped us really, you know, take this calculation and, and you know, make it much easier um, and make it, you know, because obviously we, we weren't getting more resources to do this work. Um, so we were asked to do it with the resources we had. So we took what could have, what should have been a very difficult and time consuming task. And, you know, we made it manageable for just a couple people to kind of do this, this work in this data flow system. So, um, and, you know, and then the last thing I'll say is, you know, in Q1 of 19, we, we went ahead and we implemented OTP 2016. And I think that was, um, that was great for us, um, mostly for the work paper functionality. Um, you know, being able to to pull data out of one source tax provision and kind of create our own um, 
uh, our own automated, you know, ETR, so like an ETR reconciliation that, uh, that we're putting our 10K before we were kind of cobbling that together with various exports out of one source and various um, work papers all being combined together. Uh, you know, so what we were able to do was create this work paper that kind of automated a lot of that. Because um, you know what happens, right? You, you do your ETR, you, you reconcile your tax rate and your pre-tax, and all of a sudden something changes. You know, they change pre-tax or they book a new accrual or they book a reserve or something like that. So you have to kind of start that process all over again. So being able to do that, you know, almost like a push of a button was made it so much easier being able to automate a lot of that instead of having to re refresh all the work papers and, you know, run all the reports and kick it out of one source and, and kind of go through that nonsense again. So I think that was um, one of the main um, benefits we saw of 2016, one right. source, 2016. Yeah, and, and Mike, uh, I'll tell you, using going back and thinking about that project using data flow as that central hub to pull data from the source systems and through our kpmg's itra the tax reform analyzer and oit and otp using that as a central hub to collect store transform and then extract and push and pull data between the tools was um just uh you know a model of seamlessness and 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 streamlining of data and I, I just hope that everyone listening on this webcast can achieve that that type of streamlined um, data acquisition extraction transformation and loading uh, because it works like clockwork yeah absolutely yeah. sorry sorry Mike. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so, so absolutely. I think, you know, just the, the ability to very easily push the data into a system that could very simply uh, do those very advanced calculations of specified interest of QBI, of interest limitations at the CFC level, you know, to have that, you know, be able to happen in, in this, this, um, this ITRA model that KPMG has and being able to connect the ITRA to the data flow to OIT, you know, it just made it so much easier for us and may give us a lot more comfort with the numbers as well. No, Mike and Sandy, that makes complete sense into look having worked both with with Mike and uh, and with Donna on their um, one source projects I would also say your core strategy here was to uh, create a central platform uh, that helped you centralize and standardize your global tax processes and data management um, so you could have information uh, in in one location in real time and I'm hoping uh, and thinking we achieved helped you to achieve that uh, uh, in, in at both of your implementations. Yeah, absolutely, Joe. Yeah, and, and you know, the one thing to also throw out there is that as a service provider, we're always looking at how to best use OneSource with our clients and how to best use Alteryx for our clients. And I think when you look back and, and look at the Thomson Reuters and the Alteryx relationship together, they're also trying to figure out how best to incorporate Alteryx into the standing one source, you know, platform and, you know, building the connectors and the APIs and kind of realizing that so many companies out there are using both tools that it even makes more sense just to integrate the two as almost one combined tool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's part of an ecosystem of being able to reduce the time of data processing, um, shorten up those closed cycles, but more importantly, have more confidence in the accuracy uh, of, of the data, less, less manual click count throughout the course of the process. Okay. Great, so I think we're gonna head to a polling question real quick here, and it's a pretty simple one, I think, hopefully. Uh, what is Alteryx? <laughs> We'll let you guys respond for a couple seconds here. 30 seconds. It's always hard for this panel to be quiet for 30 seconds. But <laughs> that's why we're on me. And no Googling the answer. <laughs> All right, so Alteryx is an analytics process automation or APA solution, and it really brings together um, analytics, data science, and process automation. And it's it's really tailored for, for tax professionals themselves, not just IT folks or a center for excellence or something like that. So, all right, great, thanks. Uh, let's go on to question number two. 
So how has the current environment, uh, so COVID, remote work, et cetera, encouraged you to evaluate your technology needs and create efficiencies? And for this one, I think we're gonna start out with Donna. So I could definitely say the, the biggest thing about where we are today in our technology is I am thankful for all the investments that we've made in the past um, for all of our tax technology resources. Um, when we were told we had to work from home, I think the biggest shift that we had to figure out is how are we going to work from home with with our families at home with us and everything like that. But it wasn't a question of how am I going to be able to physically get the work done at home? Because we have really over the last couple of years really invested a lot in our uh, technology strategies. So some of the things that we've done um, in the in the past three years is we've implemented uh, our data flow solution for our global provision process. We had been using OTP and data flow on just our domestic process probably for about six years already at this point. Um, and we've also started using the file room and workflows on our in our US compliance. And I could definitely say that the workflows in the file room really helped our US compliance teams stay in lockstep as they were going through all of their processes, being able to, you know, again, track where people were in the compliance process, able to share documents very easily. Because um, what we've had is, you know, our whole, all of our tax packages for the US team in the file room. So that's really helped us um, extraordinarily throughout all of this time to be able to make sure that the things that we're concerned about more so are, you know, keeping our kids out of our offices as we're on meetings like this, <laughs> instead of trying to figure out how to get all the documents that we need to do our job. Great, thanks. That's and it. any any comments from the panel before I move to Michael? Uh, I, I could add something, Kelly. I know yeah. that um, Thomson Reuters received, uh, released a survey earlier this year. The um, I'm just looking at it here, your um, 2020 uh, survey, I think it was called, which also included the impact of COVID um, on 300 US tax departments. It was a very well put together survey. And I also in line with what KPMG feels as well. So it basically asked tax departments in the current environment, um, most, most of them aren't looking to in increase their size when it comes to human resources. And, and that's understood with, with budget impacts. But the focus right now appears to be on creating efficiencies and cost savings through technology. Um, and that, of course, impacts remote working environments as per Donna's example. Um, and that beats uh, hiring new people and also beats uh, external service provider efforts. So technology is a key factor uh, going forward. And it's great that um, companies like J&J &J and AbbVie and Michael has a chance to speak already embraced that mindset um, so that they were better prepared for uh, an unknown thing like COVID. I'm so glad you brought that up, Joe, because the 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 two things there too that you just said, if you um, if you think of technology, they were uh, the survey breaks down to say that um, people are having to do more with less through the technology, and um, also the current technology that they have getting the most out of it, mm -hmm. as well as implementing any you know net new technology by proving out the ROI and becoming more efficient and then getting more strategic within tax. So it's kind of interesting. Sorry, was that Sandy? Yeah, yeah. I was just gonna say, you know, what I'm hearing from my clients and, and what we've been seeing, you know, is coming out of coming out of COVID, there, there will still be a lot of folks working remotely um, and, and we won't all be getting back to our offices at the same time or, you know, um, quicker than maybe a lot of people think. and I think the focus on collaborative technologies like one source workflow manager, particularly that gives you multiple users globally, uh, web based for document management suites, for calendaring, for internal and external due dates, 
for workflow process management, for IDR management, all the different modules and tools th that can be used here, I think um, I'm starting to see a big spike in interest and in people wanting to, you know, reevaluate their usage of the tools that they have it and how they can more robustly use it, as well as folks who don't have these types of technologies to start to look at them more seriously. Um, and, and just being able to, uh, you know, adapt to the current situation we're all in. Great. And do we have Mike here? Mike, uh, what are I your am. thoughts? Yeah, what are your thoughts? So, so I think Donna used a great word when she said thankful, you know, for, you know, what has been <laughs> happening the past few years, leading us, us up to where we were and where we are now. And, and I think, you know, definitely I am thankful as well. And I, I think, you know, she and I are being spoiled, I, th I guess, in the past few years, being able to invest so heavily in technology at our companies and, and kind of get us, you know, ready for something of quite unknown like this. Um, you know, so it, it hasn't been a huge struggle for us working remotely, working through this pandemic as a company. Um, you know, one of the things I, I can speak to, though, is, is a current environment for me myself is going through this uh, combination, this Abby Allergan combination and just, you know, being on that side of um, transition and, and, you know, working with the team over there on the other side at Abby and, and seeing where they are from a technology perspective and a process perspective. And, and they haven't made that investment and in seeing how far behind they are. Um, you know, and, and when we're going through these transitions, when we're, we're having these discussions with them, we probably spend more time talking about what we do from a process perspective, what we do from a technology perspective, how data flow works, how OTP works, you know, how, you know, what we've invested in. We spend more time talking with them about that than educating them on our UTP positions or our, <laughs> you know, our tax rates or whatever. Um, it really is more along the lines of what we've done to, you know, push ourselves into the, you know, in, into the future of technology and you know how we've advanced over the past few years because they want to catch up and and i think that's just you know that that's you know to joe's point that's like the state of the world you know wanting to invest in technology wanting to to move forward with um with streamlining and and, and advancing yourselves without the addition of you know 100 contractors or 30 new employees so just seeing Mike, that is very eye opening michael thanks um your comments you know are around technology around covid are great and then you bring up a great uh, other topic which is there's other uh changing environments which are mergers and acquisitions or divestitures thomson reuters is very acquisitive and we also divest as we did uh last year and the year before so uh you know how are these technologies helping you there because it's pretty challenging when you're bringing these big companies together or doing a large acquisition or merger. I, I, I think it's great for us, especially with one source tax provision, because we're able to, or even data flow as well, because we can slice and dice the data however we want. Um, and if you're doing your provision in Excel, you, you're kind of limited by the power of Excel. You, you can only do what you can do. Um, you know, but with like one source, if you know, we can create subsets of data with data flow, we can extract data, compare data, we can, you know, put things side by side to show them how we, um, how we trend over the course of, you know, quarters or years or whatever. So just being able to very freely and, and easily pull data to share, um, you know, very quickly, I think, you know, number one, it makes us look good as a company, you know, because we're able to do all this for them. Number two, it just makes our job easier because we don't have to go back and like manually recreate all this nonsense. We can just kind of pull it you know, together pretty quickly. Yeah, and Mike, I agree with from that perspective too. You know, J&J &J is constantly acquiring new companies and we've really had a high focus on standardizing our tax provision process using data flow and OTP. And now when we have a new acquisition, it's it's more of just, okay, you know, here's here's our process, here's here's our team that's going to help you in, you know, to acclimate to our process and we just pick it up and go. Yeah, that's great, Donna. Our tax team too, same kind of boat where they said if they didn't have some of these technologies, well, they were also going through the planning for the acquisition or divest divestiture. They wouldn't have been able to respond quickly enough to the, the planning teams. Mm -hmm. And then also once the deal's made, you know, responding to all the, activities they have to do for compliance and reporting and so forth so yeah yeah i was just going to say that on the planning aspect and forecasting aspect where you know if you need to forecast out what an acquisition would look like if it happens in q1 versus q3 to maintain an excel model or build an excel model to be able to roll it over and do it within a day or so um 
is virtually impossible. Whereas one source, you can just roll it over, create a new data set, and you know, and, and you're off. Andy, also, you know, you in your client um, experiences have dramatically used Alteryx as a front end calculatory module the way you've built them. Uh, if you want to talk a little bit about that as well, before the data feeds into one source tax provision or one source income tax, some of, some of the stuff that you've done that's really eye opening in, in the Alteryx space. Yeah, and, and on my clients, we've had, you know, clients with multiple businesses um, in the banking industry. You may have had your auto loan business, your credit card business, your actual consumer banking, personal banking. And within these subsets, there's multiple charts of accounts, multiple GLs. It's just, you know, as they've grown through acquisitions, they've never changed over the GL systems. And what we've started doing was in order for them to get the most out of automation and get the most out of one source is bringing together all these GLs through Alteryx, doing automation, you know, in Alteryx or pushing the output to a custom one source work paper where they can almost preview a book to tax walk before they ever push it to the client. Just again, it's all based upon process and what you're used to. But just that time alone, what we've started realizing is, you know, it was taking clients you know, two weeks to do this, and now they're doing it within 15, 20 minutes right. on just and, getting and, the data in and the automation aspect. And, and Kelly, the upcoming, uh, you know, integration APIs between, you know, Alteryx and the different tools. I know there's some that are out live now, uh, other ones that are coming down the pike. We, we just discussed that. Um, very excited about that development, having the data within Alteryx move directly into the OneSource suite. Yeah, that's right, Sandy. We have, um, for those who don't know, we have the uh, one source income tax connector that's live today. We also have a uh, calendar connector that points to some of that workflow you guys were talking about that allows you to kind of really expand the leverage of the, the calculated end dates and uh, into your workflow processes. Um, and then we also have the new data hub. There's a new data hub that in KPMG, you can talk to your team at KPMG. They're very um, you know, aware of it and been working with it uh, okay. a bit here. Yeah, where um, you'll, you guys will have a better place where you can have shared entities, shared accounts, shared trial balances, et cetera. So really a data kind of lake, if you will, for um, all your data storage across every tax area. Um, and then we also have an indirect tax connector that just went live. So exciting stuff here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and for one source customers, uh, the best way to take advantage of that is procure your Alteryx licenses uh, on a TR order form. <laughs> one source order form. Commercial Thanks. interruption. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. <laughs> Good point, and, Greg. Okay. And, Kelly, let's, and let's, Kelly, too. I, I think we pretty much covered question three in our past answers yeah. to our last two questions. Yeah, um, I think so. Yeah. 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 I, I think so. Um, you know, the I think this team uses the data flow, um, you know, product quite a bit. Um, so, yeah, I think we've covered that. I think we could go to maybe the next question. Polling question first. OK, polling question. That's me. Uh, what is one source data flow? I get the easiest questions to ask. <laughs> <laughs> We should have the Jeopardy music playing in the background or something as they're doing. <laughs> I know. Go ahead, Sandy. Let's hear you sing it. We can have Joe hum it. Yeah. <laughs> He's shaking his head. Okay. Uh, so one source data flow is a web-based data collection and data management tool that has a data repository. Um, and it's part of our overall one source workflow uh, suite. It's really good if you want to templatize and kind of put controls around your data management structures. So great. All right, we are on question number four. Uh, what type of benefits have you attained from your one source and Alteryx implementations? And we'll start with Donna from J&J. &J. Sure. So I think I've already touched a little bit about the advantages we've gotten with our Alteryx implementations, but um, along with many multinational companies, uh, 
some of the biggest challenges we had um, and why we looked at the one source tax provision tool was just gaining um, visibility to the drivers of our effective tax rate in an efficient way. Our closed calendars are very tight um, and being a company as large as we are, you know, it, it was, you know, feats of miracles that we were able to gain all the commentary that we needed in an efficient way. So by implementing one source, it really gave um, visibility into every tax cycle. So we use the tool for our forecasts. We use it for our interim closes and also year end close. And the US team actually uses it for their federal estimates as well. So we're really using the tool as often as possible to um, gain visibility into our cash tax and our effective tax rate and deferred taxes. Also, um, by implementing the file room and um, you know some of the workflows, and but mostly the file room, we're we're now gaining that place where we can have all of our audit ready documents, which again has been a very large struggle. So we you know struggled at the beginning and struggled at the end of our tax cycles. Really, um, when you look at the whole cycle of you know provision all the way through audit. So this, these tools are really helping to get us organized and a lot more efficient. And another one of the struggles that we really had in J&J &J is our finance colleagues really are hyper-focused on our management reporting, where taxes hyper-focused on every reporting from management to legal reporting. So what this tool really did was gave a standard view of our um, data collection process helping us to um, bridge some of the gaps with our finance colleagues to kind of demystify what's a legal entity versus a management reporting company. And we've gotten a lot of positive feedback too from our finance colleagues because they rotate probably about every two years and they'll go from pharma to consumer to MD. And what we've been able to do now is in the past, it was like, okay, well, here's a template that the pharma group would be using to request the data. And then MD would use something different. And we're on one standard template now for collecting everything that we need for the tax provision process, which has really helped finance really understand what's a legal entity and what, what's the makeup and the building blocks that I need to provide to you. So it's helped people be able to focus more on the business than learning a new template. So that that's also been probably one of our key goal and you know key benefits by rolling out these tools. And, and Donna, when we, we started the project years ago, um, we laid out certain goals and objectives, and I just what stood out in my memory was standardization and transparency. Mm -hmm. And you know you see it up close and personal if you pick up like we said on an acquisition how easy it is to scale it. And if you make a change to one template, it updates all the templates. So everyone's standardized around the world for the provision process, at least using these templates. And then at some point you can extend them out for compliance purposes, global compliance if you want. There's, there's, there's an unlimited amount of utilization here that, that you can put these through if you need. Right, and some of the cool things that we've also done with the data flows is being able to, um, also to help with our Alteryx process at the very end, we actually took all the key touch points that we wanted to analyze to say, does OTP data flow um, tie to our consolidations tool? So we actually put together a bunch of consolidated data flow templates too, to also pull in all the data in a more efficient manner than instead of trying to pull every single individual one, we had a consolidated data flow template pulled to together and that actually attaches to our Alteryx workflow. Mm -hmm. So, awesome. you know, we really stretch the limits, I think, of, of some of these tools, but it's been a lot of fun too in trying yeah. to figure out how to get them all to work together. Yeah, I think when you, when you look at a provision process or even compliance process, there's people spend their time either wrangling data base, trying to get it from the GL and get it into a format to get it into their provision model or maintaining your provision model, rolling it over, updating it, you get tax reform, and you know, there you go. Um, linking, adding in new quarters, forecasting. And, and I think when you look at one source and Alteryx, you know, the immediate ROI on these tools is it's in hours, right? 
yep. tasks that could take you 20, 30, 40 hours are taking you, you're clicking a button now, you're running a process, you're doing it within 10 minutes and it's, it's allowing you know, the user to get out of the front end data wrangling and get into, is a number correct? You know, how do you know it's correct? You know, why do you know it's correct? And and just really the validation on the back end that what you're presenting to your chief tax officer is indeed that effective tax rate is good to sign off on. Yep. And Andy, to add to that, um, our experience with you know the many clients that we've done this work for in the past is on average, they're saving about 50% of the time um, in collecting data and managing data and transforming data by having these more efficient processes and more integrated processes in place. And Donna sort of touched on this a little earlier. Part of the intelligent strategy in implementing these technologies is not necessarily to just stick them on top of the existing pro the existing way that you're doing work. We have to look at ways that we enhance and re-engineer processes as supported by the technology, and that's where you really get the big wins. Um, and Mike, uh, to your point uh, earlier about the amount of time saved using these tools, um, do you want to speak to this question as well? Because I think uh, folks would be curious to hear about, mm -hmm. you know, your experience, especially now that, you know, there's the merge and, 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 yeah. and your history with this. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, I think, I, you know, in question one, I kind of talked about how Allergan kind of grew, you know, non-organically through acquisition. And, and I think, you know, what we've benefited from one source implementation is just being able to, you know, standardize work papers, you lessen risk, you, you know, you save time, you know, you, you have consistency amongst your data. But I think it, the other thing it forced us to do was kind of also to look at our process, you know, and make sure that what we were doing was the right way to do it. And kind of rethink about how we do things and, and how it fits in with the ones with the one source or with the technology solution. And I think it was you know a great man once told me like you have a good process you get to your answer fast, but if you have a bad answer you get to your wrong answer faster. So you have to have good good process. <laughs> was that me who told you that? Is that no, me? No. Oh, that. You know him though. He's used read, that line before. I like it. I, I, like I had to read the quote. I'm going to uh, use that line now. I like messages. it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to get it right. You don't want to speed up a bad process with automation. No, no, no. And, and I, you know, I think a lot of companies might be doing that. So, yeah. And as you're building automation, you're, you know, the whole thing is you're, you're forced to reassess what you're doing, right? And again, it goes back to is have, you know, what I've been doing is it correct? Excellent. Point. Right. And you're, and you're, it's forcing you just to look at everything else and really reevaluate it and reevaluate the whole process. Right. And I would say, you know, when you're doing your Alteryx implementations, that's definitely one of the things, What especially by for their C by C filing. Um, our tax manager basically sat with them and go and went, why are you doing that? Why are you grabbing that? <laughs> mm -hmm. What's that for? Right. Who gave you that? And it, she really forced people to take a step back and go, oh, maybe I don't need that. Maybe I need that instead. Or, you know, just because they are just basically trying to take the current process and attach all tricks to it. But it really made people take a step back and go, oh, maybe I don't need that. Maybe I need that instead. Oh, and we're doing all this work because of formatting. And so it, it really was forcing them to take a step back and go, oh, I don't need that. <laughs> Great, thanks, Donna. So I think we got to get to question five here, guys. Um, this has been great discussion so far. Um, one thing people always want to know in taxes, you know, how are you able to put your business case together to get the tax technology in place, uh, you know, overall? And it sounds like Mike, you and Donna have both been successful here in terms of getting some of this technology in place, even you know, ahead of our remote working environment. Um, so can you share any lessons that you guys might, uh, you know, have learned through the process and anything that's worked for you? Uh, maybe yeah. Donna, go first. Um, so, I mean, I think I've, I've spoken many times about the business case and, and you know, the how J&J &J went about. It. And, you know, again, one of the biggest things was support from the top. But I did want to more sh share a more recent example about our business case and, and looking at our tax technology roadmap. You know, one of the things that we've seen is, you know, our our business case was approved now, what, Joe, like four or five years ago to ago. use, yeah, <laughs> use OWS. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
so you know our strategy at that point made made sense for what our current environment was and one of the things that we've had to look at as as we kind of been finalizing the strategy um, related to our OWM implementation was that our groups were more in-house um, sourced as far as our resources and, and the work that we were doing and the whole OWM suite at that point, it made sense to go with the workflows and everything like that. And now we're finding a lot of our global teams are in more of a co-sourcing model yeah. where um, you know they're working more with um, third parties to do some of their exercises. So we actually had to take a, you know, basically reevaluate our whole, you know, roadmap as far as OWM was concerned in this past year. And, you know, we're definitely not walking away from the suite by any means, but we are redoing a little bit of our strategy, especially around the file room and figuring out ways to still have all of our documentation put into the file room for, to, so that we can ultimately have our audit ready strategy. Um, but definitely the, the what our roadmap looked like and how we were going to go about it five years ago has definitely changed. So I could say the biggest recent lesson I have had is just because you have this approved business case and you know doesn't mean that it's still makes sense today. So always reevaluate before you start to, you know, put the pedal, you know, foot on the pedal and move forward with things. Well, yeah, we'll see, Donna. Okay. Uh, sorry, Kelly. Um, Go ahead, Joe. Well said, Donna. And look, we've all learned that and nothing more than COVID has taught us the need to be fluid with your tax technology strategy uh, and the need to completely understand that it is going to change over time. But part of good successful implementations is sort of building that into the way that you design and roll out the models so that it can be flexible as things change. So done a very, very good point and no more valid than right than these current times. Yep, agreed. So Michael, how about you? Yeah, I guess I would say I probably learned a couple things, um, you know, trying to put together business cases um, and just kind of going through it. And, you know, number one being, you know, one of the, one of the two couple things I, I'd like to speak to is just, you know, needing to be realistic about, you know, what your resources are and what time constraints you have, because um, you have to understand that, the, you know, you're going to have to have some involvement and your team's going to have to have some involvement, um, if not a significant involvement in these implementations. So just being cognizant of the fact that, you know, people have families, people want to take vacation, people have other jobs they need to do. So it's not all about this implementation. So just be re realistic, um, realistic. Don't um, overburden yourself or your staff or, or your people. Um, and then the other thing is just w when you're trying to pitch this to your boss or whoever, you know, there's always something to be saved. It, maybe it's time, maybe it's, um, you know, risk, or maybe it's dollars. You know, one of the projects we did with the KPMG team, we, we um, with Sandy and Joe, we implemented um, a worldwide data flow for our international provision. And the way we were doing our gap provision overseas is we were co coordinating with another accounting firm and, you know, basically paying them to do the work um, that we could automate ourselves. So when I looked at what we were spending on this other firm, you know, on an annual basis, and I looked at what we were spending for technology to support that firm, and I put it all together, it, you know, by a small margin, but, you know, but it exceeded the fees we were going to pay Sandy and Joe to, you know, get this process up and running. So I had a one-time cost to get this project up and running, but, you know, I saved that in year one, and I saved that in year two, I saved that in perpetuity. So, you know, I, you know, that, that to me is an easy, easy win, you know, pay the fee now, avoid the fees in the future. In perpetuity so it's just that to me is you know there's there's always some savings that you can bring to the table and, and then you have i'm oh, sorry joe and, and then you have all the other you know besides the quantitative benefits right of the business yeah. you have the qualitative be benefits right you have better technology better controls you know scalability the list goes on and on joe sorry no no not at all sandy and now mike on top of what sandy just said you all, you now also have your own internal process mm. to manage what you were paying someone to do outside Oh yeah. Um, so that's you know just Excellent. another added part of the benefit. Yeah, yeah. The, the dollars always win though, Joe. So I know <laughs> having that in your back pocket, you're guaranteed to win. Remember, there's tactical projects here and there's strategic. Yeah, and and, right. and with with with, the, with J and J and Alec and Avi V here, I think they were both strategic and tactical. Absolutely. <laughs>
Yeah, and the great thing is um, we have been working with KPMG as well, and we have various business cases that we can share with the, your teams, that those of you that li are listening in the audience today that might help you kind of think about how do you put, put these business cases together? How do you frame this stuff? So just reach out to us and we'd be happy to share some of that content. All right, so here's our last polling question. Uh, what is a tax technology business <laughs> case? <laughs> All right, it's an internal business case that really stipulates the business requirements, the objectives for the automation that you're gonna put in place in tax, um, along with the scope, cost, timeline, payback, ROI, if you will, uh, for the implementation of the software. So uh, with that, I think that's our last polling question today. We just really wanna thank you. I um, uh, wanna thank my esteemed panelists here. Uh, you guys did an awesome job and we want to thank you guys for listening to us and please um, put some q a some questions in the chat and we'd be happy to respond to you uh you know throughout the session thanks fantastic thank you everybody thank, thank you everybody, everybody. Bye. Bye. appreciate bye. the time bye, -bye.